Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Solid topic for you today, straightforward. Let's do it. What's the scariest thing that has ever happened to you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Not long ago, I had a job as a part-time dishwasher. My shift usually ended after all the rest of the staff had left for home, usually around 10 p.m. My last chore was to mop the basement floor. One night I decided to experiment with cleaning solutions. I mixed water with bleach and lime descaler. Unbeknownst to me, I had inadvertently created a deadly gas. Full disclosure, I failed high school chemistry miserably. Almost immediately, I was nearly knocked unconscious by the fumes. I barely was able to empty the mop bucket into a nearby sink before it was lights out. Then, for the next 24 hours, I had a strange metallic taste in my mouth. Anyway, I'm glad I did not die that night. Being a poor and obscure man as I am, I suppose that dying alone due to sheer idiocy would be a suitable way for me to leave the world. Still, the headlines would have been interesting. Something like, elderly dishwasher overcome by fumes and dies in restaurant basement. I was in a construction on high rises. I was climbing down a wooden ladder from the top deck when they were putting down rebar, and as I looked down to start going down the ladder, I felt a gigantic thud on my helmet and was knocked down a couple of rungs before catching myself again. Turns out, when they were putting up the rebar walls, a piece that was leaning on said wall fell down directly onto my head. Luckily, I was looking down, because if I was looking up, it would have caved in my face. I was also very lucky it was a relatively light piece of rebar. Always wear your PPE, guys. When I was one year old, my mom wanted a divorce from my abusive father, but he didn't like the idea, so he kidnapped me and my mom and drove to a high place with a lake and told my mom if she didn't stay with him, he would drop me and my mother there to kill us, but my mother accepted, but after one week, we moved out while my dad was at work and ran from him until I was 13, right now I'm almost 14, and fight him in court and kind of won to say it. Also, he went to prison when I was like four because of my mom. I upset some old federal prison white supremacist inmate, thought he might get a bit stabby. I was in this rural county jail in my hometown. It's a jail that makes money by renting space out to feds and state like it's a damn hotel. And then they mix everyone up. So the jail had a whole lot of people I knew and had grown up with. And also this guy who had arrived on a federal transport. Along with his shitty prison white power tattoos, he's obviously a con. I was playing basketball with a bunch of black dudes as was normal in the jail. This dude was walking around in circles around the rec area. He walked behind me and he said, are you an N-word? Dude close to me overheard right now and was like, what the F man? Tensions. Then a guard kicked everyone out. We go back in the pod. I sit down with the guys I was playing ball with as was normal in the jail. And I look at the guy and he's sitting there staring at me like I murdered his puppy. I was sitting there thinking he just got here though. He probably doesn't have a shank, right? Guys around me were not happy with obvious racist either. Things are obviously going to happen. I'm thinking, hmm, this might not turn out well. Guards ended up feeling the tension in the air and moved that guy. Why you gotta come to our nice jail with your max security shit? Well, it sounds like you're in a nice, pleasant jail. Again, I always forget the fact of jail and prison, the difference, but people remind me from time to time. But uh, yeah, there's no place for that. I mean... You know. Bye. My ex. He was violent, but not very bright. There was a day I was hiding at my parents' house where he managed to break in. I was alone. The windows and walls were soundproof. I knew in an instant I was effed if he decided to kill me right there as nobody would have heard me screaming. He grabbed all the phones from me. I ran all over the house but didn't dare go into the basement because we had heavy weightlifting shit down there and several guns. I didn't know how to shoot yet, but he had already threatened me once with a gun before. I spent what felt like hours just talking him down and keeping away from him, 
I never before thought about just how many knives my parents had for cooking, but I was suddenly very aware of everything even remotely sharp and pointy. At one point, he had me pinned by my neck with his knees pressed into my belly, as he said he wished he could squeeze me till my eyes popped. He threatened to burn the house down with both of us inside. He noticed I had gained weight and said he'd cut into me to see if there was a baby if I kept fighting. I eventually made it outside and just screamed and screamed and screamed. He panicked and ran through several backyards before being bitten by a dog and ended up in a hospital and then jail. I seriously question sometimes if I'm dead in an alternate universe because that experience by itself had scared me like nothing else. My son and I were ran over crossing a residential road after he exited his school bus in December 21. No one was on either side, behind the bus or on the other side of the road, so I grabbed his hand and we ran. As I heard tires screeching, I looked over and a car was flying at us. It all went in slow motion. I grabbed my son, spun around to cover him from the back. I took all impact, but he flew. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't really pass out, but came to on the road and couldn't speak out a word. I tried to scream his name. Jet, Jet, I kept saying. My vision was dazed. Everything hurt. I tried to get up, but I could only crawl. It turned into a stumble here and there. I could hear all of the children on the bus screaming, the bus driver praying to God. I finally made it to him. He somehow got to the back of the bus and was in a puddle of blood. My son suffered a TBI, missing teeth, road rash. He suffered seizures from the TBI. Today, he's an amazingly healthy 11-year-old with no ailments to his name. He is missing his lateral incisors, but I'm going to get him braces to fix this issue. We're going to close the gap. His K through 9s were luckily baby teeth and are growing in now to close that gap. They said we have to wait until he's 12 to do so with braces. That's fine, because he's doing amazing. I suffered from broken bones and shifted broken teeth. I still have the effed up teeth, as well as a collarbone that did not fuse together correctly. I didn't have time for physical therapy or subsequent checkups. I was worried for my baby. He had no scarring. I applied scar gel to his wounds on his face from road rash non-stop. I tended to his needs non-stop, all while mangled and broken. I refused all pain medications minus ibuprofen or Tylenol. I'm thankful to whatever God there is that my baby is alive. He is all that is good in this world. I'd get run over again and again if it meant he was alive. Around two years ago, my stool gave like a free one-week vacation thing for people that have a six-point yearly grade. We use numbers here, six being the highest grade, aka an A, and I was one of them. We go to this hotel, and it has a beach next to it. Me, my friend, and my other two roommates decide to go to the beach together. So we go in the water, and for some stupid reason, we decide, hey, we should go deeper in the water. And me, being a dumbass, I also agree, since my parents never let me really go deep in the water. P.S. I can't swim. So, there's these big-ass rocks that separate two sides of the beach, and we pass, like, the level we're on to. It was pretty deep in the water. I then hear my friend laughing about how at one point the water goes from, like, the level we're on to very deep, and... When I decide I go there myself, and yes, it was very deep, I was barely able to stay above the water. But when I tried to go back to my friends, a small wave hit me, and it was enough to push me even in deeper into the water. At this point, I start to really panic as I actually start to drown, getting only a moment to breathe as the water keeps pulling me. But by some miracle, I grab onto my friend that's in front of me and managed to get out of the water, sobbing, as it really shook me. Listen to your parents, people. I'm no one to judge, but if you can't swim and you're going into deeper water, it's a little foolish, all right? That's the harshest I'll be, so just know your limits, that's all. I've had already 19 lives, LOL. 
I don't know honestly how I'm still here, trying to figure out life. But one night, only by the grace of angels did I live. I was 20 in the early 80s, and I was beautiful. I got off work at 2 a.m. from an upscale restaurant jazz club, and it was pouring rain. I ran across the street to where employees parked. Holding my bag over my head, I had long hair. As I opened the car door, a hooded man grabbed my hair, then knocked me over and slammed me into the steering wheel. He got in and punched my face and landed me on the floorboard. I froze. He stripped off my work vest. I was wearing a satin tuxedo and blindfolded me. He slashed my shirt and hogtied me. His knife cut off my satin pants. I was naked and bleeding. He then drove to where his car was and tossed me into his car. After a couple more beatings, he armed me. He told me point blank that I was going to die. My angels said to love him, loud and clear as a bell. They said to love him, I love you, 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 it came out of my mouth through tears. He opened the passenger door and kicked my ribs, pushed me out on the side of the road in the pouring rain. I crawled naked and bleeding to a steak and ale bathroom and waited for help. It was after 4 a.m. I had had two hours with this guy. A woman brought me sweatpants and a hoodie. The police asked me what I was wearing when I was assaulted, as if it were my fault. I believe that by saying I loved him is why I'm still here. My abusive dad approved a medication for a condition I didn't have that nearly killed me. I was 16 at the time sent away to one of those incredibly abusive residential treatment centers that are coming under fire these days for hurting kids. I was one of the lucky ones. Not all of us made it to the finish line. Unbeknownst to me, I was severely allergic. I went into full Steven Johnson mode. My skin started separating on my chest. I noticed I couldn't breathe and I blacked out. That's all I really remember until the broken glass feeling of trying to breathe after a near-death experience. I didn't see any dead relatives. It wasn't peaceful. Jesus wasn't coming to guide me to heaven. I feel like I was literally drowning and being burned alive at the same time, all because I was too hard to manage. But he would have rather had me dead. It's a shame he never cared about who I really was. He missed out on a neat kid. I'm a part of a search and rescue group, mainly in a snowmobile squad there. On one call out, my group had to search a lava field. I was first and the weather wasn't great, and I flew off a 10 meter plus about 32 feet and smashed the steering wheel when I landed. I broke my chest, four ribs, got internal bleeding, ruptured and smashed the steering wheel where I landed. I broke my chest, four ribs, got internal bleeding ruptured vein near my heart, bleeding in my brain, and a huge cut on my knee. Probably some more, but that was most of it. I got hauled in a chopper to a hospital, where I spent three weeks on a ventilator in a coma, and about 15% chance to live when it was worst. Finally, got out of danger and survived. That was 15 months ago and I'm still dealing with the aftermath of it. Lack of deep sleep, knee somewhat busted, torn ACL, and still doing physical therapy to get better and just recovering slowly.